Hello and welcome. Void Linux is an independent distribution based on no other, and therefore like no other. We're going to look at it now. Void originates in Spain and is based on a rolling release model which is kept fresh with daily updates and yet manages not to be bleeding edge. Instead of the device of systemd in its system, it uses runit instead, which many say is more simple and robust. For this quick review video, I downloaded the most recent XFCE live image, and so I'm going to boot an EFI KVM with it and do a standard install. So here's our ISO. We're going to select the first option here and boot right into the live environment, hopefully. Let's uh, take a look and see. All right, let's uh, configure for a better screen resolution here. 1920 by 1080. And uh, let's make this terminal a little bigger so you guys can read it. Let's launch the installer with sudo void installer. So enter the void. Let's do that. Click enter here. So the keyboard, uh, I'll probably stick with the defaults here uh, since that works for me. English US. Networks already configured. So we don't have to do any network configuration here. We'll choose the local ISO images for the uh, packages. And for the host name, um, I'm going to give it void1. Locale, I think it's already set correctly, but just in case, I'm going to set it to en underscore us utf8. My time zone is the uh, US Pacific or America slash Los Angeles. Let's see if I can find it. There it is. And next, it wants the root password, so I'll enter it twice. And the primary login name, I'll make give myself Steven as void user. Give myself a password once and twice. And the default groups are OK. Wheel is selected, so that's good. That's the most important thing for this video, at least. Um, yeah, OK, so let's install the bootloader on our VDA, our 32 gig drive. We'll use a uh, graphical boot. Let's partition this drive. I'm going to use CF disk. And uh, I'm going to select the GPT label since it's a UEFI machine. So the EFI partition, let's make it 600 megabytes. Type EFI system. And the rest of the space will be root, the root file system, root mount point. So let's go ahead and write that and quit. For those two partitions, are be, will be fine. So VDA1 is our VFAT FAT32 EFI partition. We'll mount it on slash boot slash EFI. Yes, we want to format it as FAT32. For VDA2, we'll make it ext4. And this is going to be the root file system. Yes, we'd like to format it as ext4. All right, so we've done that. So all that's left is installing. So as a review, boot EFI will be BFAT, 600 MB bytes, and the rest of the disk will be on slash root as ext4. We'll let it install. Since everything, since the source is local on the local ISO, this doesn't take long at all. OK, it copied the live image to disk. And now it's rebuilding the init RAM file system for the target, which presumably is the 
uh, dev VDA, which is our virtual disk. Okay, it's applying installer settings. And it has been installed successfully. That's what we'd like to see. Let's go ahead and reboot. There we go. Let's go straight into the default entry for Grub. And uh, there's our LX uh, Display Manager, I believe it is. All right, and we're in already. So um, let's fix that display resolution with display settings. Let's go to 1920 by 1080, and we'll keep that configuration. All right, first things first. Let's open up a terminal, make it a little bigger for you guys. And let's do a sudo xbps install dash su. Uh, make sure we're up to date. Looks like there are a whole bunch of updates are available. So let's type yes to go ahead, or y rather. Yeah, a whole bunch of packages. It is a rolling release after all. And we're almost done here. Didn't take too long. All right. 63 downloaded, one installed, 62 updated, 63 configured, and zero removed. All right. So we're up to date. But before we reboot, I'd like to install a couple of extra packages. sudo xbps-install-capital S xtools to check on the system services, and also time shift since this is a rolling release. We need to uh, be able to do snapshots. Let's go ahead and install those two packages. So that's done. So xtools includes the command xcheck restart. And I'll check all your services if they need restarts or not post updates. And it looks like a whole bunch of them uh, need an update or a restart rather. So uh, let's reboot. There we go. Booting void Linux. There's our display manager. Put in my password. And we're back to the XFCE desktop. Pretty standard looking to me. All right, let's open a terminal, make it bigger. So the kernel is 5.13.19. It was compiled on Saturday, September 18th. So at least a little bit over a month now as of this video. It's using 294 maybe bytes, so it's a very light uh, distribution. XFCE is very light. Let's take a look at the file system table. So it's got slash on ext4 and boot EFI on VFAT and the temporary file system. So nothing unusual I can see there. Very simple setup that we've done today. Okay. So if you try to launch time shift using the menu, it'll fail. It's probably some permissions uh, error. So what I'm going to do instead of fixing that today, I'm going to do just uh, run it manually from the command line with time shift dash GTK. So let's just run through the basic default settings for time shift. We'll ignore root and home Steven directories. We won't back those up. Use a real backup program. Uh, this is just for rolling back convenience. So we're creating our first uh, snapshot. And those backups, by the way, uh, use something like Deja Dupe or some other, there are many simple backup managers. 
and back things off-site on a different drive, uh, preferably geographically diverse, especially if you're putting uh, a Linux system like this in production. There we go, that's already done. Snapshot has been created successfully. So next, let's uh, install with sudo dash s uh, neofetch. And let's run neofetch. So void Linux has its own iconography. Kernel is 5.13.19, uses XPPS query uh, to show it has 542 packages, uh, bash is the shell, resolution is incorrect, it's probably a KVM issue, XFCE 4.16, which is the latest as of this video, 343 megabytes used, still very lean, nice and snappy, I really like this. Let's take a look at some of the runit files here. So let's see what's in the run SF, svdir default. So it's got a bunch of things, network manager, ACP ID, Gettys, a few Gettys, uh, Dbus, LXDM, display manager after all, policy kit, SSH daemon. For um, SSH daemon, let's take a look at the script. So cat etsy sv sshg run. So you can see it's just a simple shell script. Runs a key gen if needed. And xx and supervises the ssh daemon. It's very simple how run it is set up. So we won't have time to go through all of that today. But let's check, before we leave, let's check the homepage for Void Linux. So that's voidlinux.org. And there it is, very clean homepage. So Void Linux Distribution is a general purpose operating system. It has a separate package system, XBPS. It has a build system. And they remind you it's not a fork, an independent distribution. It's a stable rolling release without being focused on bleeding edge. A lot of people like that. It uses Runit, as we've seen. It uses uh, the C library, libc, which is this image, and also Musil if you need it. XBPS is the native system package manager, and also a package builder, XBPS-SRC. So these are the latest changes. This, uh, live updates as to the packages uh, that are updated. So they've got uh, US Mirror Retirement, uh, Hacktoberfest where you can contribute, do pull requests because everything they do is based on GitHub. Their documentation is very thorough, I found. Um, we certainly don't have time to go through all this today, but if you're interested in how to manage services and daemons using Runit, these are all the commands to use for taking services up, down, restarting services, status of services, uh, how to enable services, what uh, soft links you have to perform. Very thorough, very clean uh, documentation. High quality, I found. They even talk about Wayland, different graphical and desktop environments. Here is all about the XBPS package manager. It's very powerful. Yeah, it reminds me a lot about uh, of FreeBSD. There's our XCheck restart that we did earlier. You can search for packages in the repositories. You can add repositories. Um, they have a non-free repository as well. You can also search for a certain binary package, say Thunderbird. If I click on Thunderbird, uh, and on the template file in GitHub, everything's in GitHub, very handy. So you can uh, walk through the uh, template file and see how they build the Thunderbird package. Very useful to know. Yeah, 
very thorough. So yeah, let's click on their GitHub section. Yeah, pretty much everything is on GitHub, so everything's open source. You can take a look and see what they've done. Also, they have some instructions here on how to build source packages or build from source. So here's a, the building packages section. Walks through th you through step by step. Also encourages you by sharing and signing your local repositories so you can contribute to the growth of Void Linux. Very cool. It's not nearly as extensive as the Arch user repository, but it's a great start. So there it is. I can see why Void Linux keeps attracting attention. It's self-contained, and its package handling and build system is very reminiscent, to me at least, of FreeBSD and its ilk. It also seems to be a good match for older hardware, with its minimal bloat and support for 32-bit systems. They even provide live images for Raspberry Pis 1 through 4. In summary, I think it's well worth checking out. Let me know in the comments below what you think. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. Please show your support for these videos by smashing that like button and subscribing if you haven't already. Until next time, be well.